thing, uh, which is a little bit about methods for comparing niches. And hopefully when this is finished, they'll not be available. Otherwise, we can move on to the practical, which gives some examples about how to do niche comparison. Okay. So, um, whenever we're going to start looking at multiple species or even um, projections of species across different time frames, we're going to need some metric that allows us to compare, in the example of two different species, to say how similar or not is the niche that we see on a uh, um, model for this species with some other species. And so we've been talking about sister species and how similar or otherwise the niche for these species are. And so we need to find some metric that allows us to quantify similarity of niche. Now, there's really two approaches to this sort of comparison. And the first is not to look at the niche model, but to look at the underlying data so we might look at an individual variable to say what is the temperature profile that we see for this species and compare that to our other species. Okay? But that's not looking at our niche as a combination of variables, but just looking at individual variables for each species. And then the second is to try to compare a full niche rather than just, uh, the, just single variables. Okay, and in, in this way we normally project that niche onto our uh, uh, geography and look at the areas that are selected as um, uh, uh, suitable between these two or multiple species or whatever our points of comparison are. <coughs> now I'm going to contradict myself because. The first method really can split into two different um, approaches. The first is we directly compare the values. So what's the minimum temperature for this fish? What's the maximum temperature for this fish? Okay, that's a really simple comparison. The second is that we want to um, look at more than one variable at the same time. And we can't really do this with our models directly. But what we can do is perform some sort of ordination. So I, I, I assume that many of you are familiar with principal component analysis, where we take multiple variables and try to simplify them into you know, one or two variables that show most where most of the variation is. Okay. So we take a, a complex system, simplify it, and compare that simplification. Okay, and then thirdly is the method we just spoke about, compare um, the results of our models. Uh, this is just a, a slide that I really like now. Um, but um, the, the, the way that we do the first set is to find out what the minimum and the maximum temperature for our species is. So, um, mechanistically, we do this by taking our distribution data, drilling down into our climate layers, and picking up a data matrix that says point 0.1, that's the lat, that's the long, that's the temperature, that's the precipitation. And then we get a data matrix and we can analyse this data matrix. Okay? There's lots of different ways that we can do that with a GIS, with uh, a whole bunch of packages in R, or um, this uh, model example. Yeah. So we're going to go into detail about how we compare observed values. So we extract, with our distribution data, we extract the values of the environmental variables we look at and within do some kind of plot is a simple way of just trying to compare. So here's a bunch of 
supplement species, okay, this is a small flowering plant. And all we've done is plot the range. So the little dots show that the, the um, um, average uh, of this is, uh, I think that says precipitation in the wettest month or something like this. And we can see that this species has a, a, a massive range of um, environmental stability, and this other species has a very narrow range. And this is environmental range, <coughs> not geographic range. And we can compare uh, different species and say, what's the, what's the, what's the observed um, range of these climatic parameters? And we can talk about which are similar and which are very different from each other. A sort of, the same sort of approach, but slightly more complex, is rather than just look at the range, we can look at the distribution profile of, of these. So here is the bean plot where the thicker uh, the bar, the um, more observations we have at that particular um, environment uh, parameter. So here, temperature. So the, the fat point says that most of these species are found at about 4 degrees C. Okay. And if you look at the profile of these species and say, you know, where's the where's the core environmental preference? Okay. And another way of, of, of displaying this, same data, but we have a profile of each species. We can visually compare one with the other, and we can do um, some kind of uh, stat sets and say, is this very different? But this is all sort of, um, pretty obvious standard stuff. And to be honest, when you're doing when you're doing your modelling, you should always look at the responses that you get just from the original data set. So, I mean, for me, every every kind of data model, get my distribution points based upon cleaning them, obviously, seeing what's good and what's bad, and then I look at the um, Raw environmental data I like get by drilling down on the points and that tells me something. Yeah. I mean, it might tell me that if I get a peak here and I get a peak here, then I've got some dodgy records and I might go back and look at them again. And then, yeah, so it's a part of the data cleaning process to understand what's going on. And then you understand that, okay, this looks realistic for my species because people have reported that this is the range that we see. Yeah. It's a reality check, it's discovering something about your data, and then it's Comparing the different species. Now, this example is actually something slightly different because this is not based on the distribution data. So, this is not taken points, read off the environment at that location. This is actually based on the model. So, here, the Thunder model and then the projected area of, of, of suitable distribution, and then they've then drilled down into that to say, okay, of the area that's predicted as suitable, how many pixels are at this temperature range, how many pixels are at this temperature range. How is that different from looking at the model rather than looking at the distribution points? How is it different? Well, you're looking directly to the fundamental niche. Here you're looking at the distribution. Yeah. So you're actually looking at two different things, and depending on your question, you, know, you, you, might, you might choose to look at the output of your model, to look at the profile that you think is uh, perhaps more um, realistic of your um, realised niche, and this is more perhaps reflective of any sampling bias that you have. Anyway, so this is a zoom uh, from this uh, 2013 study where they just take a model and a profile model. So, uh, in some way, it's equivalent to a um, response code. Okay, so we can look at um, comparisons in many ways and one way that we're interested in is looking at relationships between uh, you know, general or groups of closely related species and so there's this um, there's this nice 
tool in Phylocliff that basically takes a phylogeny and then draws the branches based on your environmental parameters so you can get a sort of nice overview of how species are related to each other and how similar or different their uh, environmental um, uh, preferences are. This isn't the best formatted example, but um, so you can see that here we've got two closely related species, but um, uh, their uh, temperature preferences are, or uh, well, the mean temperature preferences are different, and here's the spread. So you can see that actually one completely encompasses the other, but the mean is just slightly different. Okay, so the, the, the first approach is relatively simplistic, but it's easy to do, and it's something that you, know, you, you really ought to be doing with your data. Second is that yeah, we don't want to just look at single variables in isolation, because we know that many are correlated with each other, and the world is as simple as just saying, is the response to temperature. We need to look at more than that. So we can perform an ordination and then plot our different species or different um, uh, groups of interest on our ordination environmental space. So here's a principal component analysis where plotting in the middle is the observed um, uh, values of our target species. And, uh, what they've done here is they've drawn the lines around, this is all of the observed environmental space within the study area. Okay, so the target species is here, but this is all the, the environmental space that's available to it. And uh, I think this is some proportion. <coughs> yeah, 100% and 50% of the available background environment. So we can see how tight an environmental space our organism is to be available. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have experience with this matter? No. What? And no, because I've been using it for some time. It sometimes it behaves really strangely and nobody has assessed it. It was published, they put a script on the website, lots of people uh, start using it, but when you start playing with it, it gives you yeah. something really strange but it results of just one principal coordinate analysis, uh, principal component analysis is old old tech. It's not yeah, but there's lots of like things that I didn't for instance it says it's not influenced by background choice, it's, it's not true. So it's, uh, I'm just wondering if anybody has Yeah. No, I, I have done a direct experience with the tool that they use to, to do this, but principal component analysis is pretty simple to start for it. Yeah. Uh, but whether these have got extra features that do something different, I don't know. But anyway, so what they did here is that they looked at a, a species that um, has got a um, native range and an invasive range. And when they plotted it on the PCA, they found that actually the invaded range and the native range are separated a little bit in environmental space. Okay. And so they used this as a, as a niche differentiation between the, the um, native range and the invaded range. And here with PCA, you can look at the directionality of each of the variables to say which of, which of the variables are pulling our species apart. And so I can actually read that to see what the um, up down um, variables are that seem to be important here. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did you? I I didn't hear. I don't remember what you said. Niche shift or niche difference or because some people use uh, different words very specifically for what appears to be an evolved difference versus what is an observed difference in what they realize given the particular regions they're in. Um, 
Can you make any distinctions there of how you're using these words? Um, yes, I wasn't really thinking very uh, carefully about what terminology here. But essentially, what they did is they just, um, in, in this case, they just looked at two populations. One is the native range and one is the uh, invaded range. Plotted them and see that they were, saw that they were different. I mean, how you interpret that is... Um, okay, so you... Um, we can't yet say whether this is a shift due to what's available or due to any biotic differences or evolved differences. Just that the observations are different in yes. the, the re estimate that we have of a realized uh, niche based on our sample. Yeah, so this is discovery uh, at the moment, discovering things about uh, the, uh, our models or our um, observed values okay. that we would, can then interpret later. Yeah. Would it be like a potential range? Uh, so this is based, I think, on observed values. So this is environmental space, based on a principal component analysis, <coughs> where the plots here are just density of points. So most of the points are in the sort of middle of this for the native, well, I can't remember which way around it is. And at the top, it's just, there's, a, there's a clustering of points for the uh, uh, invasive range. Okay. So what this is doing is, is displaying um, our two comparisons in environmental space. And the inference here is that there's been some, um, some method of differentiation of those niches, and that might be a shift, or it might be just an uh, 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 adaptation, or don't know. Okay, so um, the third is to produce our model and then compare our predictions. So here's a question. If we've got two different models, why can't we just compare model parameters to tell us something about our um, niche of the language of difference? And because the niche is there, I mean, the coefficients to relate those parameters. That's what you should compare to it. It's not about the environment, but the relationship that they have to the world. That's the way I understand it. Yeah. The way the relationship, that it's the niche that the species has with the environment, and not the environment itself. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, uh, from, a, from a more mechanistic mm -hmm. point of view, how do we build our models? Do we do them, do, do, we, do, we, do we build good models? by just plugging in all the same variables and all the same data and producing an output? Or do we do something else? No, we just select the yeah, 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 so so yeah, 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 yeah. So we select different environmental variables yeah. for each species. So we have no realistic expectation that model for this species uses the same environmental variables, uses the same extent, Uses you know, has <coughs> both the same relationships that says this variable and this variable is correlated in a strong way, and that's an important factor in this model. But this other model for a different species may not use that variable at all because we you know, we chose not to use it for that. It finds it to be not important. It doesn't find that same relationship, so we can't compare model components because we just don't have the same ingredients. <coughs> well, why don't you choose the same variables? Yeah, but then <coughs> still your model will perhaps draw out a uh, quadratic factor for temperature. But that quadratic factor for temperature just doesn't appear or is not selected in this other variable. Then you've got no means of comparison. And you also do the possibility of, of making a nice model for both and comparing the other. Yeah. So the way that so the, the, the way that we try and compare models is we develop our model using uh, the best methodology we can, and then we compare the predictions of occurrence, the projection of our model in our geographic space. 
Okay, and essentially that's um, what I've just said. So what we're going to do now is we're going to compare our predictions of suitability. So I take the areas that we're predicting is suitable for one species and another. Okay, so um, this sort of comparison has been used um, quite widely in the literature, um, and there are two uh, two metrics that are essentially like um, a correlation coefficients, so values that sort of um, <coughs> range between zero and one, where zero means very different and one means um, identical. Okay, and uh, these two metrics are called D and I. Um, I've said the file looking package in R calculates these metrics, but also the Dismo package in R does it, um, SDM tools does it, and um, probably ENM tools that come then does it as well. So um, it, it, it's actually um, a widely available in, in lots of different um, uh, software packages. So, um, how do you say it? Shown as D, um, ranges from 0 to 1, and this is the um, mass, if you um, care about the mass. Okay? And it, it's essentially just a comparison of the uh, probability of occurrence or our habitat stability value um, at each location. Okay? Uh, Genetics is based on the geographic space or on the <coughs> geographic space. Geographic space. Okay. So uh, each each um, each point that we're considering is basically a pixel on our grid. Yeah. Okay, and the R statistic is based on uh, the having a distance. It's not actually the having a distance. So. Um, which is having a distance, and it's just a, a slight adaptation of that. Okay. But again, it's just a comparison of the, the uh, environment, uh, the suitability index that we get at this pixel for one species and another species. Okay. Compare that, and compare that, and that, add them all together, and we produce a value where naught is sim uh, not similar and one is identical. Okay, so what we end up with is a bunch of models, and we can directly calculate our D and our I metrics, and we end up with some numbers that look like, uh, I guess you are <coughs> familiar with correlation coefficients, and these are, we can interpret these as correlation coefficients in some way, but uh, high numbers, so here, with the I statistic, it says Rossa rubinata and Rossa calatata are the most similar because they get a value of 0.5. So rubinata and calatata, the distributions are most similar. And the most different are actually changed between which metric we look at. So the lowest value for that I is 0.31, that's Gigantia versus Binata. And the lowest value for the D metric is 0 0.2, 0 0.2, which is Jokentia and Coltan. Okay. So two different metrics, they're not going to produce exactly the same results because they have different maths behind them. Yeah. So we need to keep that in mind. Uh, generally, people report both metrics, um, but um, uh, I don't know which way around it is, but I believe the D has been shown to be mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to, to be slightly um, worse performing than the I metric. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you can do this in R code and our um, practical later is, is going to essentially do this. So, um, what that, what that metric does is it gives us a number that says 
the similarity between species 1 and species 2 is 0.5. Is that a good number or a bad number? Is that, you know, what, what, how, do we, how do we evaluate whether that's a statistically significant similarity or not? Um, well, we can't directly, but there's a randomization procedure that we can use to uh, address that question and give us a statistic to say whether uh, the significance level of any similarity or difference. And this is called the